Cabo Wakatu. This is Daku. And today I want to talk to you about fighting and how to fight your enemy. Now, many of you are fans of the fight game. You in the mixed martial arts, you in the boxing. Many of you train even for boxing, for mixed martial arts. Some of you I realize many of you don't train at all for anything except how to expand your gut, how to eat more shit that the white man has given you, have fallen prey to the white man's bomb of nutricide, okay? We told you before about the five-point star of black destruction that's been dropped on black communities all over America and the world, but primarily in America. If some of you live in other areas of the world, then share how the white man is destroying you in your parts of the world. But in America, for sure, there's been bombs that have been dropped in the black community all over America. What bomb are we talking about? The five-pointed star of black destruction. Nutricide, menticide, fratricide, suicide, and genocide. Nutricide causes you to appear to be killing yourself by what you're putting in your mouth. But because you rely on your enemy to feed you, then your enemy changes the genetic makeup of the food. So what you think you're eating, you're not even eating. So how do you fight against your enemy? Many of you think you fight against your enemy with a gun. We keep telling you that the revolution cannot be based on guns and bullets alone. The revolution cannot be based on guns and bullets alone. If you rely on guns and bullets, then you fail to realize that your enemy is attacking you on every level of human existence. He's attacking your food supply, your water supply, your air supply. Huh? He's splitting up. He has laws in place that help to split up the black man and black woman. He has laws in place that make the black woman think it's all right to go get an abortion. It's legal, in other words, to go kill your baby. It's legal for a man to dig deep in his pocket because he knew he done stepped out on his woman and pay for the damn abortion. How do you fight the white man? Because you've been destroyed on every level of human existence. You must fight the white man on every level of human existence. So, what rules must we play by? We can't look at fighting from the perspective of one of these religious people out here. We can't look at fighting from the perspective of religion. Because religion going to give you all types of rules. It's going to tell you, nah, we can't. We can't include women in the fight. Women ain't supposed to fight. We can't include carnivores, people that eat meat. They can't fight. We can't include people that got a job. They can't fight. We can't include people that don't have a job. They can't fight because they don't have no resources. The people that got a job, they're tied into the Caucasian so much so that they can't fight. So we don't want, they're, they're easily... Let me put it this way. People that have a job are easily manipulated by the people they work for. So they can't fight. You steadily talking about everybody that can't fight. Meanwhile, you standing on your own over here. The fight is not individual. The fight is collective. If I'm fighting against 20 people, no matter how much good shape I'm in, as a middle-aged man, I'm in real good shape. In fact, my shape, I'm comparable to those that are 20 years, 25 years younger than me, okay? But I can't fight 20 motherfuckers on my own. I can't see behind my back. Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, the 20 are going to defeat me. So I'm going to have to bring people in to fight with me. There are rules, yes and no. Because yes, you can fight on your own, but you'll just go out as a martyr. They'll talk about you like they talked about Malcolm. What happened to Malcolm? 
Malcolm got assassinated. Okay? They'll talk about you like they talked about Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. What happened to Khaled? He got assassinated. They'll talk about you like they talked about Nat Turner. What happened to Nat Turner? Nat Turner got assassinated. What happened to Toussaint way back in the Haitian Revolution? It's controversial, but Toussaint got assassinated in an indirect way. Every time you look at somebody that stands up individually, they get assassinated. They get killed. They get defamed. Huh? They get imprisoned. You can't have individual revolution. It got to be collective. Now, yes, individuals play their part, and every individual has a strength that nobody else has, also has a weakness that nobody else has, has strengths that everybody has, and has weaknesses that everybody has. Okay? So how are you going to fight against your enemy? If your en enemy is quicker than you, then you got to find a way to eliminate their quickness. Break their legs so they can't move. If your enemy is stronger than you, then you got to outquick them. You got to outspeed them. If your enemy has speed and quickness, then you just have to think outside of the box of what you've been taught about fighting. Think outside of the box of what you've been taught about thinking. You think, rather, let me not say you think, because most of us don't think. We've been taught to regurgitate. So we hear information, even from those that we love and admire, and we keep regurgitating the same information year in and year out. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. It ain't working. So you got to add to your fight style. You got to add to your fighting style. Your fighting style has to evolve. Racism, white supremacy continuously evolves. But black power, black consciousness, black liberation, you see people still doing the same thing they was doing 100 years ago. The debates between Booker T. Washington huh, and W.E.B. Du Bois. Debating ain't nothing new. You just debating. But a good thing I'll say about Booker T. Washington is, is that he went out and did it. So even though he might have been debating, and I don't mean one was standing over here and one was standing over here and they were debating. I'm talking about just their ideologies clashing. Booker T. went on out there and got the people to build their own school. Right? Read the history. Alright? So this is way back. Booker T. Washington was so effective that the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey came to America so he could meet Booker T. Washington. <laughs> now that's some real powerful stuff right there. He didn't come to meet W.E.B. Du Bois. We got too many intellectuals out here. If you're too intellectual, then you ain't going to move because you're going to spend too much time thinking. Okay? The other thing is, you ain't going to fight if you're too comfortable. Because if you're too comfortable, you're not going to want to lose your comforts. So fighting depends on your desire to fight. The white man's taking your desire to fight away from you. Because you are so indulged in the sense pleasures. Every pleasure of the tongue. You're like, you got to try this, Daku. This tastes good. I'm like, nah, I don't eat beef. I don't eat pork. I stopped eating chicken short a little while ago. Very small time ago. Stop eating chicken. Nah, but you got to taste this. This is good. Trust me. Of course it's good. Y'all always talk down on planning. But the white man plans. The white man uh, has laboratories in which he develops things that taste better and better and better so that you'll keep coming back to eat the damn stuff. Alright? Y'all talk about homosexuality. Homosexuals can't fight. They're a disgrace or they don't have no place in the black liberation movement. Black consciousness, homosexuality goes against black consciousness and the principles of black consciousness. Well, doesn't alcoholism 
go against the principles of black consciousness. You don't see walk past these liquor stores every day in the black community and don't say nothing. You see these people lined up around the block to get something to drink and don't say nothing. Because black people don't own the liquor store and you only focus on black people. <laughs> All right. So black people just going in there as victims of the black holocaust and overindulging in something that's going to kill them. That's part of the nutricide bomb. Okay? That's been dropped in the black community. Another bomb is the fast food restaurants that have been dropped in the black community. If you look at black communities all across America, and I don't mean the upper class, upper upper middle class black communities, I mean the poor black communities. What you going to see? You're going to see some raggedy ass grocery store. You're going to see fast food restaurants scattered all throughout the black community. You're going to see liquor stores right next door to each other, right across the street from each other. None of them going out of business. None of them going out of business. Blocks away from each other. You got a liquor store every square mile. One liquor store. So everybody in that area who is a victim of the black holocaust that seeks to drown their sorrows away, that seeks to feel better, they're going to go get the liquor. And for those that have graduated beyond the white man's fire water, we got drugs all throughout the black community. So yeah, even though it's a poor black area, guess what they got in the black community? The pharmacy for your legal drugs. And then you got hustle man with the illegal drugs. They're going to get you going and coming. So while you fighting, pop, 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 you thinking your enemy's right in front of you, you pulling the trigger. Meanwhile, it's quietly dropping bombs all throughout the black community and you don't say nothing. We have to become more sophisticated in our fight. There are no rules to the fight. There are no rules to the fight. When we started Black Liberation Without Boundaries, a couple years ago, we did that because we didn't even realize what black supremacy was. So black liberation without boundaries was an anonymous movement, first of all. Because if they can see you, then they have a better ability of attacking you. If they know who you are, then they know where to find you. If they can't find you, they can get one of the white man's niggas. To help them find you. Alright. So first of all the movement was about anonymity. Second of all. That means anybody can join. How you going to tell somebody. You can't join the fight. Against the white man. When the white man is destroying you. And your woman. And your child. And your unborn child. You going to tell people they can't fight. It's because you really don't want to fight. You afraid to fight. So you trying to deflect the attention off of you and start looking at all the frailties and weaknesses of the black community. Frailties and weaknesses that were born out of the black holocaust. That were a result of racism, white supremacy. That's your focus. I'm telling you right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever weaknesses you have, there is a place for you in this fight against the goddamn white man. And don't let nobody tell you no different. This has been Daku Akabo Wakatu.